And I don't know if we talked about this the other day on a podcast or if we talked about this just in general or whatever. Maybe we haven't talked about this at all. But, uh, and this is like not really evolution, but it's just an interesting thing to get your thoughts on. Like, if we go to the fact where, you know, in however many years that we're going to have, um, we're going to have intelligence in our brains. I know we've got it in our phones, but like that we can, you know, get a Google chip, you know, in your head and you can process things at the speed of a computer can look up something or process something. When that happens, I believe, and this is a fucking horrible thing to say, but I believe that will be the point where humans will take the fork in the road and there'll be Homo sapiens, which is like, you know, the, not the West, and, you know, people that don't have money and, as techno- and technology that the West has, they will stay Homo sapiens and then there'll be a fork in the road. And we'll get... So that's... Neanderthals to sapiens where yeah, we extincted them yeah that'll be looking back if we survive however long, however long like that'll be the point in history people will like go that's where we changed that's where you know? we mm. the, the homo sapiens became extinct well it didn't become extinct I think sh- well we advanced further up to it'll be different no, no. I mean people with access to these uh, technologies will have a big advantage yeah yes. Yes. Like we'll, yes. we'll still be homo sapiens but that'll be as unfortunate and I, f- I feel like this is like not racist but like species I feel, I feel like it's a horrible thing for me to say but, but it's just an idea like uh, there'll still be homo sapiens but the west who has access money and like yeah and, and whatever to, to great power yeah to be to be these superhumans basically but in, in many ways we already are yeah i know but uh but not to the same degree you know that, i think when we get to the point where we have fully taken on computer intelligence in our heads you know like it's obviously it's it's, it's sci-fi but it's sci-fi that's going to happen in the next 50 years you know That'll be, I reckon, the point where like humans will divulge and say, "Here's Homo, sa- here's homo sapiens." Still, I don't think they're going to go extinct because that means all the smart people with the yeah. computer chips would just go kill all the other people. Yeah, like, yeah. that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. but it's where the people with the computer chips in their brains will be so much more powerful and tread a different path evolutionarily mm. than. But do you not feel sapiens, like that right? fork in the road's already happened? No, I don't. Really? No, I don't. But so all all of the non-Western cultures mm. who don't have access to the internet you're saying there are different species already no they're not species. <laughs> well, that's what you just said <laughs> no but you no, but you didn't say that you, you didn't say that we'd become a different species no you, I did you, that's you, what I was saying but fork in the road homo sapiens and another and disadvantaged another no no I mean homo sapiens stay homo sapiens okay. is that a different species or is that a different like sub branch of species or whatever uh, homo sa- like homo erectus to homo oh, sapiens yeah, yeah, different, different species yeah yeah, yeah different species yeah, so yeah. No, that's precisely what I was saying homo, yeah. homo sapiens and homo um, Futuralis, okay. For example, but, but, to make but, up a but two name. things that having a chip in our brain won't change our DNA, so we won't be yeah. changing so as we, a species. Yeah. So if you talk about evolution, I mean, it has to have a change in the yeah. in the genome, and mm-hmm. that has to be carried on through time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that is so when when species form, there has to be some sort of like reduction in in the kind of I- I- genetic exchange or interbreeding between the two, right? So mm-hmm. there has to be some way for for that. It, that that kind of transfer of individuals to to stop happening, and mm-hmm. that would take a very long time in in the human population, just because we're we're kind of you know there's so much yeah it's so global now yeah that's right the, the, but yeah but there'll so, be no change in the species because we'll always have to implant chips. Uh, yeah, but if you have, for example, imagine imagine culturally, soci- uh, societally, or whatever, the, like the people that have this just superhuman brain power. Mm. Like and, the, and this this line doesn't. Yeah. Then surely that line. I know it's not at that point in time when we implant the chips. That's not that's not the change in species. But if you think of like the 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 drip of water where the Amazon tri- tributary where the Amazon starts from, it starts from somewhere. So my theory is like that's where it would start. That we'd go down a different path. Like because yeah, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, that, no. So like, so would it would it be the case where the chip would eventually evolve into something that changes our DNA. I think uh, the, the chip would, would change us because it would it would alter our our reproduct. So so the way the way that evolution happens is is the change in reproductive success, right? So the any any, any mutation that that helps you have more children and for those children to have more children, yep. that's going to increase. That's going to part be passed on. That's yep. going to increase that mutation in the population. And um, you know if if you have this chip that gives you all these like superhuman powers yeah. or, or superhuman knowledge, then that would be that kind of advantage. But that might override any genetic deficiencies you might have, right? Yeah. So if you're born, you know, with very low intelligence, but you have this chip yes. that gives you the super intelligence, then then 
you would um, maybe be more likely to leave, um, you know, more more children than you normally would. Yeah. So so the yeah. so the chip would change the behaviour essentially, mm-hmm. which would then probably Force make evolution maybe. It, which the, the behaviour would change the evolution because the you would essentially be making better better decisions. Mm-hmm. But but yeah. I, see, but, but this is what I think, right? Because Again, going back to that thing of more advanced or, uh, you know, societies in this day and age with, with access to greater um, greater knowledge and, and technology and all that sort of stuff tend not to tend to reproduce later in life and all that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Um, I feel like that chip as well would do the same thing. And so we actually wouldn't be repopulating and repopulating and repopulating. I think I think the other thing to to think about is is how this technology will spread throughout the world, whether it will be a more like equitable distribution of the technology of these benefits or not. Mm. And you know, if it's going to if the inequality is going to going to continue or increase, then that will just get worse. But um, I don't know. Maybe there'll be a, a revolution. <laughs> yeah, but do you think it will? Like, do you think the technology will spread around the world? Like, going by the current trend. Uh, but I think what happens is, you know, as te- as technology progresses, its cost comes down, yep. and it gradually gets. You know, people have more access to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but by that stage, that okay, good. It's good. It's good that the cost came down. But will that baseline cost level still be too high for for less privileged societies to have access to it? Well, I don't know. I mean, because if if you if you think about it from an evolutionary point of view, I mean, evolution is going to happen over such a long period of time that yeah. that sort of spread of technology will be like a you know in a blink of an eye, really. Yes, that's very true. Actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because even things like whether you call two things, different species or not. Uh, it, it's, There's no, uh, like, it's, set time, yeah, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when, do you, when, when, did, when did humans and Neanderthals become separate? I mean, we, yeah. we first started separating probably, like, 800,000 years ago, yeah. but we continued to interbreed for a little while, and then That's right. probably over a f- couple of hundred thousand years, that, that, those, geno- that ge- those genomes kept getting exchanged, and then eventually we would have yeah. parted ways completely. That's right. But actually, to, to, to play devil's advocate to my own point, mm-hmm. if two... If, but if, if, to argue with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but like with, with when I was saying, so that would be the point and fork in the road. And culturally, obviously, we have more power. I think things will change. But if, you're, if you've got the Google chip and you're a super intelligent human being, you have a super intelligent human being that you mate with, you're still going to have a human child, aren't you? That's what, that's what I'm saying. Chip. Yeah, because it always yeah. has to be implanted. But yeah. again, but the chip would change the DNA. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Limitless with Brad Cooper. The chip would change the DNA. Yes. No, what no. The chip would change the behaviour. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So, like the the um, it's it's. Have you seen Limitless? No, no. Oh, okay. It's about it's about this um drug that allows you to access hundred percent of your brain. Okay. So it becomes incredibly smart. All this True sort story. of stuff. True story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have a friend of a friend of mine. Um, <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, right? So by the end of it, he'd come off the drug, massive withdrawal, didn't have to take the drug anymore. Mm-hmm. But the synapses in his brain had changed the way that he could see the world. So we always had access to it. Yep. So having this chip for mm. a few generations would change the behavior of our evolution. So it's not that the chip would change, no, that's right. it's that the behavior mm-hmm. would evolve. And with the synapses thing as well, would being, say, say we were that smart with the Google chip, would our oh, synapses yeah. in our head actually strengthen? And even say after 50 years, you took the chip out and you're 70 or 80 years old, you have a much more stronger, more powerful brain yeah, maybe. From, it depends on how, how, how long those things can, can actually persist yeah. and whether they stay around, right? And, and I think there's some evidence that that might happen, yeah. Right. Yeah. But actually, uh, one thing reminded... What, what you were saying about uh, you know, changing the DNA reminded me of... Because so, this discussion is basically assuming that these chips will, will make all the difference, but without any other... I mean, there'll be other advances, right? And one of the big things happen, that's happening now is, is genome editing. Yes. Right? So there's, yeah, so Isn't these that methods, shit amazing? Yes. Yeah, go in and you can, you can change a specific bit of DNA... Um, and you can you can do that to to different species, and there's talk of doing that in in humans as well. So so that that Ethical will actually make a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. is this the uh, this is uh, are the Chinese doing that? Are they doing it behind the scenes? Oh, I don't know. Stuff? That's probably uh, you would have heard rumors, right? You would have heard <laughs> yeah. Tell us the truth. Yeah. No, I'm not really. No, I'm not really aware of that. No. no. no I reckon they are. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, that's actually fascinating. So have you seen Gattaca? No, I haven't seen Gattaca, no. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, you've got to see Gattaca. Gattaca. Gattaca I watched it just the other day. There's a lot of movies I haven't seen G-A- yet. G-A-T-C. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get around it, mate. Yeah. What are you doing, um, <laughs> Come so, back on the show in a couple of months. <laughs> um, yeah, I reckon that's uh, actually quite... Uh, so, 
to this, like at this point in time right now, can we decide on the eye colour of our children if we, if we, if it was legal to do so? Oh, I think it depends on. Oh no, we can. We yeah, can. We can. But it, yeah, it's the legal issue. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Because because some, some of the some of our features are, are only controlled by a, a small number of genes, and it's it's fairly easy to you know to control <laughs> for those, that, right? Tweak that shit out. Yeah, but um. Let's but, say I wanted to become. Uh, well, better endowed. Uh, could I probably switch the it's old? It's too late, bro. It's too yeah. late. You've got to be pre-born. Yeah. yeah, a lot of things to do with the penis. A lot of things to do with like size. A lot of things to do with size and like height and things like that. They're right. controlled by a lot of different genes, right? So <laughs> this, is, this is a big problem in, in in domestic animals, like trying to make your your, your cows like have more you know meat. Or whatever. Dick. <laughs> well, well, I don't I know if that's I don't know if that's that, that useful for the butcher, but um, true. Yeah. Depends. But, Depends. <laughs> yeah, but um, but that's like been a an area of research in itself, just trying to. Uh, work out how to how to improve these features that are actually controlled by lots of different parts of the genome. And will that uh, cause deficiencies in other areas of the genome? Oh, it's possible because yeah. I mean, a gene's not just going to affect one thing in isolation. Well, that's it has what like I'm these saying. other butterfly effects. Effect. Yeah. The butterfly yeah. effect. Yeah. Sort of the butterfly effect. Yeah. So what can we? So at this point in time, right now. So like you just said, yeah, cool. How do I get a big dick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you you can change the color of eyes. Like where does it? Where does the science? How far does the science go right now mm. with gene editing and gene yeah. splicing? Like, can we yeah. Co- yeah. control height? Can we control emotions? And like, you know, <sighs> am I going to be a good person, funny person, nice person, bad person? Oh, what I can think, we do? I, I think the links with like between the genome and and like behaviour are, are you know one further step removed. I yes. mean, it, it, the the physical features are a bit more obvious, a bit easier to to control. But uh, what one of the areas now is yeah. is is. is um, big, area, big questions is de-extinction, right? Bringing back extinct mm. species, and mm-hmm. genome editing is one of the solution, like one of the one of the proposed ways to do this. So, for example, the woolly mammoth. Um, one one way to bring back the woolly mammoth. So there's a few ways. I mean, you can you can clone them. You can. Um, Made you a can... dinosaur with a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if they'll bring a mammoth, but uh... <laughs> just bang a chicken. <laughs> it's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, get a big foot. Uh, put them on an elephant's back. And... <laughs> Well, well, I guess you could call it, a chicken is a dinosaur, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah, or, or you can go in and edit the genome of, of like a, an elephant and to make it more like a mammoth, right? Yeah. To, to make it look really furry, yeah. like hairy, yeah. woolly. Really woolly, I mean, yeah. <laughs> woolly being the opportune word. <laughs> yep. So, um, so we, we can't actually just straight use it. We don't have the genome of a, of a woolly mammoth just in its own right now. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. So I we mean, could just bring them straight back though, couldn't we? Well, no, because it's not, it's not as simple as just... Because uh, I mean, you've alive. got to, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe like in Jurassic Park. Did you yeah. turn the alive on? Oh, you weren't turning the alive on. <laughs> I've always wanted to ask about. I've always wanted to ask about. They made it look easy in Jurassic yeah. Park, yeah. But um, but it, even if you have the genome, it's only it's only part of the instructions, right? There's all yeah. these other effects, like uh, it's, it's called epigenetics, where it's it's these changes that occur even without any changes to the genome. And one of the examples is like all of your cells in your body have the same genome, pretty much, but. How does how does a cell know to become a liver cell or a brain cell or yeah. whatever, right? And that's all because of like switching genes on and off, and we don't know how that works in in a mammoth. Yeah. Oh, right. So the, you mentioned the Jurassic um, Park theory there. Is that a theory or is that pretty well based on evidence? Because it seems plausible. <laughs> well, well, the, the original idea I was in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> I like. Yeah, I, it, it was it was a pretty it was yes. a pretty coherent sort of story that they had. But right, um, yes. it was all it was all inspired by. So in the eighties, people thought they managed to get DNA out of these um, insects trapped in amber, right? Yeah. And and the idea behind Jurassic Park is is that. A mosquito bites this dinosaur, then it gets stuck in this amber, and then the amber forms this shield around it, yeah. and then you can get the dinosaur DNA out of the mosquito. But now we know that DNA doesn't survive for that long. Uh, the oldest DNA that's ever been sequenced is is probably about seven hundred thousand years old, so less than a million, and that's under yeah. like that's if it's been frozen the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But some some people think they've gotten um, some protein out of out of dinosaurs. So really, yeah. This research group. Um, so they studied collagen, which is um, yep. it's a, it's a really stable protein, and they reckon that they've gotten fragments of that collagen and worked out the the sequence of the amino acids that make up that collagen. Really, uh, bits of it from this. Uh, I think it's almost 100 million years old. Discovery Roger, go for deploy. 